7540, 20 Pirelli P0s. We need two of them. Add the cart. So all we gotta do now is just place the order. Thanks for the fun in the Hellcat, Will. I appreciate it. Here's two new <laughs> rear tires, bro. That's right, because it's finally, finally, time to go pick up my Ferrari, man. I missed that car and check out the beautiful, beautiful weather we have here in Pittsburgh, PA. Let's get on the road and go to Ohio. That's right, we're back in Ohio and finally we're going to pick up the F12 once again. We're going to drop off the Hellcat first though. Big thanks to my man Will for lending me his car during the whole time that uh, you know my car's been in the shop, I've been on vacation, had some other mishaps and stuff. And like I said, you got two new rear tires coming for the angry kitten here. But we do have to stop and get some gas as well. I'm running low. Again, we are back at Will Motivation's house. However, he is not home at the moment. He's actually out of town, so what we're doing is just dropping the car off here, and I'm waiting for an Uber so we can go to Midwest Auto Group and finally pick up the Ferrari. But again, big thanks to Will for lending me his badass ride. He uh, definitely came through in the clutch here when I didn't have a car, so if you haven't already, go subscribe to Will's channel. And yeah, the tires are getting uh, <laughs> kind of bald here. Definitely time for an upgrade. So while we're waiting for the Uber here, why don't we just do a uh, quick poll here? Since we have uh, two iconic American muscle cars here. In the comments, let me know, what do you guys prefer? The Hellcat from Dodge, of course, or the classic Mustang from Ford. Michael? Yes. Right. What's up, man? Yeah. All right. See you, man. Finally, finally, man. I can't wait to see my car. Let's go get it. Last time we were here, Will and I, his friend was actually looking at this Urus. I guess he didn't buy it. Or maybe it's Urus. <laughs> All right, so we're walking through the uh, service department here. Look at this pista. First time I'm seeing a pista in real life. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not ugly. <laughs> it's not ugly. <laughs> All right, so don't have a heart attack. This is not my F12. It's another white F12. And the transmission on this one went. So I just got a quick little update here. Um, this whole gearbox thing is actually covered by warranty, even though the car's tuned and all that stuff. It's just some sensor inside the gearbox. So they're just, uh, I don't know, replacing that. But yeah, a modified F12 here. So we gotta take this off, of course. Boom. Thanks, man. Yep. I appreciate it, dude. All right, have a good one, I missed this thing. Car. Thanks, man. I love this car. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, to look at the guts, bro. No, I love this car. Out of all the Ferraris, <laughs> I love this car. <laughs> cool, man. I love it, too. That's why I got the F12. All day. I cannot wait to get back in this car. God, I missed it. Well, make sure you do 100 for me. <laughs> All right, man. You be safe, man. You too. Thanks, bro. Yeah. I missed you, baby. I missed you. Woo! Yes, sir. Finally, once again, yeah, we got to turn the darn key. Oh, yeah. I haven't missed that annoying chime. There's a check engine light on your car, Mike. Look, Mike. Check engine light. It always stays on for like 10 seconds. Doing a little system check there. Man, look at my baby. Ha <laughs> ha. that down there. Oh, man, she's so pretty. I love it. God, it feels so good to be driving this thing again. We've had some issues here, but man, I love this thing. Love it. So we got half a tank of gas. We got a shell right over here. We're gonna fill her up. 
get back out on the road, get her home, and then we're going to talk about this whole uh, service experience that I've had with the car. And Because as we all know, I do have the extended warranty on here, but Ferrari actually didn't cover everything. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that, but uh, yeah. So we filmed her up a little bit. Look how pretty she is, man. She's fully stocked, but she still looks so damn good. Look at her. God, I love this car. Hellcat and all on her, but man, I miss this car. So we had like half tank, and it still took 12 gallons. Damn. I actually don't know exactly how big. Excuse me, I'm just talking to myself to a camera. Here. <laughs> this is a Ferrari? Yes. What do you got there, a Hyundai? That's Hyundai. nice too. Yeah. Sonata. Oh, that's nice. Nothing wrong with that. It works for four months of the year. <laughs> Man, my car works for more, more months of the year. Well, there you go. <laughs> Have a nice day. You too. So we got a full tank of gas and uh, 218 miles still empty. <laughs> After driving almost like 20 miles, I now have close to 300 miles to empty. And it keeps going up. 311 miles to empty tank. Man, I basically have like an SUV. Shut up. like that we are back in PA and I did not mean or do not mean for this <laughs> vlog to turn into some kind of fuel economy vlog but I gotta say I'm pretty impressed by the highway mileage here driven about 180 miles or something like that and uh, I got half a tank left that's not half bad fuel economy for a uh, supercar with over 700 horsepower when you're on the highway that is as soon as you uh, do some city driving or even step on the gas pedal it's a completely different story but I've just been cruising along, trying to get home. Wife and I going to dinner. Tunnel! <laughs> what the hell's going on over here? A car caught fire while the guy was driving on the highway and luckily you know he got his three kids out of there just in time so everyone is okay but man that's scary all right so it's the next day here and I was just driving to uh, continue this video at a different spot and then uh, as I'm getting on to the highway the same road that I'm on now uh, at the exit there you can see thick black smoke and it, you know long story short you guys saw it already it was a car on fire and I went down to look and I happened to stand next to the guy whose car it was and he said, I, you know, I just got my kids out just in time. I grabbed them. It came from the engine, something, whatever that was. But yeah, good thing that everyone got out in time. That's what matters. I mean, seeing stuff like that is kind of scary because at first there was a bunch of people standing around and I didn't know whose car it was or if people were still in the car. But then, uh, yeah, I found out that uh, everyone was out and everyone was okay. So, ugh. So yeah, let's uh, continue on with this video. Run! 
Yeah, feels pretty good to uh, be able to listen to that V12 once again. But like I mentioned earlier in the video, we're going to talk about the whole service experience and everything that uh, had to be taken care of on the F12. Some of that stuff was planned before the whole alternator belt thing happened. There's been a lot of you guys asking, like, why is the car in the shop so long just for an alternator belt? But it wasn't just an alternator belt. So uh, let's just talk about exactly what was fixed on the F12. So as we all know by now, uh, the reason why I took it to the shop was because of the alternator belt. Uh, it's actually an older belt. It was supposed to have been fixed. I was told by the service advisor uh, yesterday when I picked up the car, they had missed that during the previous service when the previous owner had the car. For some reason, they didn't uh, replace the belt. It also had got a new pulley and that was taken care of pretty quickly. Now when I brought the car there or when it was shipped there, you know, it wasn't planned of course because of what happened with the alternator belt. So it took about four days for me to get in the shop and like I, I understood that. It wasn't like I was expecting the car to be done the next day or anything like that. So it took a little time to get it in the shop. Now it also had an airbag recall. All F12s have that. I think it was on the passenger side. I'm actually not 100% sure, but that was fixed as well. Now I had another minor little issue and I've mentioned this in a, a separate video. You couldn't really tell by eye, but it was like the window wasn't going up completely. So I had heard this annoying wind, you know, sound every time I was on the highway. That was taken care of. It's just a quick little uh, readjustment and uh, now it's completely fine. I don't know why I keep closing this door when it's supposed to be open. Another thing was, I didn't notice this when I bought the car. This little thing here on this side is broken or, you know, it's not there. <laughs> I didn't notice that initially. So, you know, I didn't know if that would be covered by a warranty or not, which it wasn't. That would be a $1,200 replacement. So I said no to that. I mean, it's not that important. I can still, you know, stick my little water bottle in there. It's just that it wobbles around a bit more than I would like, but I'm not paying $1,200 to have that fixed. Now, if we uh, go back to the day where the car actually broke down and had the alternator issue, I opened the trunk lid here to get the tow hook out. And when I did that, I noticed that water was dripping out of this little light assembly here, which is kind of concerning because it's a light assembly and you know I don't want the whole freaking car to short circuit because there's water in there. So I told him about that. Basically, you know, I mean, it's dripping inside the car. Can't have that. And they were like, oh, we completely understand, of course. So, but here's the interesting issue though. So they text me back like a day later or something like that. And they say, Ferrari is not gonna cover this. And I'm like, why not? And they said, well, because of uh, the Ferrari emblem is broken and uh, the water's coming in from one of the letters here. And initially I was like, well, isn't that just 3M tape? But long story short, it's not. The F and the I, they're bolted into the trunk here. And they try to say it's because the car is expelled. And I was like, well, I mean, it's expelled around the letters. It shouldn't really matter. I mean, I've never removed the badge. I don't think anyone else removed the badge. You know, there's not expel right here. It's not like they remove the badge, put expel, and then put the badge on. They didn't do that. But anyhow, apparently the F here, or the I, I can't remember, was slightly loose. And that's where water was coming in. And for some weird reason that I don't know, Ferrari doesn't cover leaks. <laughs> they obviously cover the alternator belt and you know the airbag recall and stuff like every other manufacturer would do, but they won't cover a leak. So the water was coming in like behind this plastic cover here and then it was dripping out of the light fixture assembly there. Now to get a new badge, a new light assembly and you know seal everything up was 650 bucks. Obviously, you know, I paid for that. Uh, I, I thought it was very weird that they wouldn't cover it, but you know, it's, uh, something like that definitely needs fixed. I can't have water, you know, seeping into my car. So with me doing my research before I even bought this car, I've learned that they are pretty bulletproof. Now everyone's gonna be like, oh, no, they're not. They're, it's broken twice since you bought it. Not really broken, broken. It was the alternator belt, yes. And then we had this flap that, you know, would stay open after the track day, but then it fixed itself. So I think it was just some relay or a sensor or something like that that had a conniption or whatever, but then it fixed itself. So the alternator belt was the main issue. And that was fixed, but they won't fix a leak. I had to pay 650 bucks. 
for that. But that's that. I don't, I don't want to babble about this anymore. It's kind of boring. I want to make videos, you know, fun experiences in my car. I don't want to make videos about it breaking and stuff like that. So I'm going to switch it up here and let you guys know that I have new wheels coming for the car. Also a lowering kit and working very hard on uh, one huge, big modification. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. That's going to be the most epic one that can be done to this car right here. As you guys might be able to hear, we have a thunderstorm coming here. So we're going to end the video with that. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're happy that the Ferrari is back on the channel finally. We're just waiting for the F-150 as well. If you're stopping by for the first time and you haven't already and you want to, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.